Hello guys, today I will be doing a recap on new anime series called Reborn as a Vending Machine. Now I wander the dungeon. Yup, you heard it right. So let's get started. The story begins by the tranquil lake, where our valiant protagonist encounters an unfamiliar setting. Suddenly, a recollection floods his mind. He was cruising on his scooter when a rogue vending machine careened in front of him, colliding with his being. Astonishingly, he survives the impact, albeit unable to move. Unexpectedly, he hears his own voice cordially welcoming customers, realizing he has been reborn as a vending machine. Intriguingly, our hero, who possessed an ardent fondness for vending machines, embraces this unanticipated form with remarkable contentment. He admires his reasonably priced wares and sleek design, yet soon realizes the potential predicaments this new existence may entail. Contemplating whether divine intervention had granted him this transformation into his beloved object, he resolves to accept his circumstances. As a vending machine, he fulfills his standard duties, uttering customary phrases such as insert coin and thanks for buying. Pondering his newfound body and its capabilities, he notices inscriptions denoting the items he vends, currently limited to mineral water and corn soup. An ethereal voice enlightens him about the option to modify his offerings by expending points. To his astonishment, he possesses a thousand points, which he discovers can be converted into monetary currency used to restock or alter his goods, or even acquire additional functions. Through further exploration, he realizes that these points enable him to maintain items at various temperatures, warm frozen edibles, or even dispense hot water for ramen. Intrigued by his inventory, he unveils an assortment of products he once delighted in purchasing from vending machines during his previous existence. Curiosity piqued, he decides to experiment by changing one of his items to milk tea. With a mere expenditure of 10 points, the machine is promptly replenished with milk teas. Eagerly, he learns that he can accrue one point for every 100 yen, gradually unraveling more about his own nature. Curiously, he discovers that he requires no electricity for power as his points fuel his functioning. One point per hour sustains his operation, amounting to 24 points per day. Consequently, he deduces that earning a minimum of 2,400 yen daily is essential for his survival. Fortunately, he still possesses 990 points, granting him approximately one month of operation. However, he resolves not to squander his points until he can secure a more reliable source of income. Anxiety sets in as he realizes his secluded location, prompting distressing thoughts that his luminosity may forever remain unseen, destined to go unnoticed. Yet, just as despair threatens to consume him, a colossal frog materializes, inching closer. However, the frog's advance is unexpectedly disrupted by the vending machine's welcoming voice. Startled, the frog retaliates, brandishing a club and progressively depleting the machine's durability. Our protagonist discerns that if his durability reaches zero, he will shatter and become inoperable. Relentlessly, the frog persists in its assault, rapidly diminishing the machine's resilience. Desperately searching for a means of self-defense, he stumbles upon a revelation, an ability to acquire divine blessings. With a selection of diverse abilities bestowed upon him, he opts for the barrier skill, successfully repelling the frog's aggression. Inflated with a sense of invincibility, he soon realizes that the sustained onslaught exhausts his points at an alarming rate. The frogs eventually tire of their futile endeavors, allowing the resilient machine to endure. Employing his remaining points, he diligently repairs his durability, though he now possesses a mere 311 points. Several days elapse, and the machine's endeavor to secure sales remains fruitless. Yet, when hope appears on the horizon, a young girl emerges. Initially cautious, her hunger compels her to approach, confessing her inadequacy as a hunter. Having relied on frog hunting for sustenance, her luck has waned. Curiosity piqued, she notices the enigmatic vending machine, unaware of its capabilities. Startled by the machine's welcoming voice and its request for a coin, the girl ponders the acceptable currency. Experimenting with a copper coin proves futile, prompting the machine's realization that it lacks the coin conversion function. Swiftly, he acquires the necessary skill for a modest sum of 100 points, enabling him to accept the girl's silver coin as payment. While she deems it costly, her dire hunger motivates her to proceed. Excitement surges within the machine as he prepares for his inaugural sale. The girl opts for the soup item, pleasantly surprised to find it piping hot. Savoring the flavor, she proclaims its superiority over any available alternatives. Overwhelmed by the joy he brings her, the vending machine experiences a profound sense of fulfillment. Eager to cater to her curiosity, the girl explores his repertoire, relishing a cup of milk tea alongside her initial purchase. Her satisfaction prompts her to procure additional corn soups, ultimately yielding him a modest sum of six silver coins, translating to 60 points. Fatigued, the girl eventually succumbs to slumber beside her newfound companion. Moved by her vulnerability and considering her a cherished patron, the vending machine erects a protective barrier, ensuring her safety throughout the night. When the girl awakens, she expresses gratitude to Boxo for the nourishment he provided. Startled by his speaking abilities, she wonders if he possesses the power of speech, considering her acquaintance with someone who crafts magically empowered tools. 
She ponders whether Boxo's speech is limited to specific lines. Observing that he comprehends her, they devise a communication method wherein he responds with hello for yes and thank you for no. Introducing herself as Lamas, the girl embarks on unraveling Boxo's story. Unable to disclose his name, he happily accepts her given name for him, Boxo. Concerned about his potential loneliness, Lamas proposes relocating him. Boxo agrees, astounded by her formidable strength as she effortlessly lifts him. Grateful for the chance to move after being stationary for so long, Boxo learns that Lamas possesses the blessing of mice, explaining her extraordinary might. After some time, Lamas takes a break, desiring more corn soup. However, Boxo realizes that the soup fails to satisfy her hunger, prompting him to search for an alternative. Astonished by his ability to change items, Lamas eagerly suggests an experiment. They swap the soup for a can of potato chips, which Lamas finds utterly delectable, consuming multiple cans. Through this, Boxo manages to restore his points to 320. Returning to the village, Lamas attracts the attention of the guards who question the nature of her discovery. She describes Boxo as a magical tool that grants items in exchange for money, claiming to have found it by the lake. Concerned about ownership, Lamas inquires if she may keep it, and the guards inform her that whoever finds something within a dungeon becomes its rightful owner. Puzzled by this revelation, Boxo reflects that it cannot be a dungeon since he can see the sky. Intrigued by Boxo's ability to converse, the guards consider the possibility of selling him at a high price. However, Lamas insists on taking him to meet her friend. Impressed by his merchandise, the guards sample various items and suggest that Lamas bring him around occasionally. Boxo envisions a prosperous future for his business. As they enter the village, Lamas notices a girl being bullied and swiftly intervenes. Despite her impressive strength, she struggles to land a hit on one of the attackers. Fleeing, the men retreat, leaving Lamas to check on the girl. Lamas proceeds to an inn, where her friend Manami rushes to greet her, relieved that she returned unharmed. Lamas shares her concern about the rumors surrounding hunters and their negative impact. Turning her attention to Boxo, Manami initially perceives him as more clutter, but Lamas insists on his exceptional usefulness. Setting him up outside, Lamas aims to attract customers, while Manami suggests Lamas find employment at the inn to earn money. She hopes Boxo's presence will enhance their customer base. The townspeople quickly become enamored with the quality of Boxo's items, resulting in substantial sales during the evening. Lamas escorts Boxo to the gate, where the guards eventually grow weary of his current selection. Sensing the need for new items, Boxo contemplates his success. Having sold over 400 items, he now boasts an impressive cache of over 3,000 points. As if responding to his thoughts, Boxo emits a radiant glow, surprising the guard with the appearance of a novel item. Priced at three silver coins, the guard eagerly embraces the opportunity to try something different. Curiosity arises regarding how to consume it, but fortuitously, the can bears clear instructions. Unveiling a delectable stew, the guards revel in its delightful flavors, eager to procure more. News of Boxo's novel creation quickly circulates throughout the village, gaining considerable popularity. However, during the day, Boxo temporarily suspends its availability, mindful of not overshadowing the inn's restaurant business. Meanwhile, the girl whom Lamas had bravely rescued approaches Boxo, but her encounter with his speaking voice startles her. In response, she hurls a rock at him before fleeing. Nevertheless, their days persist, with Lamas accompanying Boxo on nightly visits to the guards. As they walk, Lamas converses with Boxo, expressing her longing for genuine communication and their shared aspiration to reach her friend on the surface. Lamas cherishes the discovery of Boxo and realizes that being reborn as a vending machine isn't as unfavorable as initially presumed. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel, Annie Explainer.